Hello and welcome to the latest episode of AB Talks, where ITP Media Group's flagship business title, Arabian Business, speaks to the leaders shaping industries and economies around the Middle East and across the globe. Today, we are humbled to host Her Excellency Maryam bint Mohammed al Mary, the UAE Minister of Climate Change and the Environment. Thank you, Your Excellency, for joining us here virtually on the show today. Thank you, Anoop, for having me. It's an honor to have you here. Your Excellency, the conversations around food security have become more urgent than ever before as nations around the globe battle hunger and commodity prices rise due to the impact of recent global events on food distribution and supply chains. As we look to the future, how critical will it be to spur local production, agri-tech innovation, and support the ease of doing business in the agricultural sector? Thank you, Anup. It's a very important question. I mean, the food security words have become buzzwords already um, for a few years now. Actually, the start of the conflict, um, but also before that, uh, during COVID-19, um, uh, food security was, was hot media words. What's really important is that food security should be tackled uh, in each country, uh, taken a holistic approach. So you need to look at all pillars of food security. You need to look at food security from a trade point of view, from a local production point of view, from food loss and food waste, from food safety. Uh, so there's so many aspects to look at when you're talking about food security. Now, if we zoom into one of these pillars, which is about local food production, in the whole journey we're trying to do, what we're trying to do is we're trying to transition our food systems into more sustainable ones. Now, when you look at the UAE and you look at the climate we're in, we are a water-scarce country. We have less than 5% arable land. So the climate that we're in, the environment that we're, that we're in, is very difficult to have the open field, huge uh, area agriculture that, that is traditionally known um, around the world. So when you look at this, this sector of local production and you look at what we have as an environment, that is why we are looking to uh, innovation and technology in increasing our local production. Using the technologies that are available to us today, local production in hot, arid climates are starting to become commercially viable and are starting to become more sustainable as well because you are reusing, for example, the water resource that you're taking into the farm and you're recirculating it. So the innovation and technology part, when you're looking at um, scaling up local food production is so important. And the UAE has taken big strides in this in the last few years. We've really tried to look at how we can become a hub of innovation and technology for local production in hot, arid climates like, like what we have here. And in order to spur this innovation and technology and harness it, there's a lot of things you have to do. For sure, there's the regulations and the policies that you need to frame around um, building that ecosystem. But there are other aspects you can look at. So for example, uh, we launched Food Tech Valley and Food Tech Valley is our, let's say, playground where we want to see innovations come up to help across the food supply chain of how we can transition our food systems into more sustainable ones. So Food Tech Valley is going to become, so it's, it's in its first phase now in the development, and we're really going to look at how in this area we can uh, incubate um, ideas, scale up ideas, uh, bring like-minded people thinking about all the different chains that we have from, from production, from distribution, from uh, when it comes to the consumer, how we can do a circular um, motion of, of where food waste and food loss goes to bring back into the system. So there's so many aspects around that. And Food Tech Valley will really help to catalyze the efforts of transitioning into more sustainable food systems. And another thing we did was Food Tech Challenge. Uh, we launched edition number two. Uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, this was under the patronage of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, uh, the uh, Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and ruler of Dubai. So he, he um, patronaged 
this initiative, which shows the political will that the UAE has to really harness technology and innovation. So Food Tech Challenge 2.0, because the second edition, um, has now been launched. And with this, we're able to uh, really catalyze um, uh, innovation and, and technology. This challenge uh, is done in partnership with Temkeen. And also uh, in this second edition, we have Aspire, we have um, Silal, ADQ, and Emirates Foundation with us too. Uh, it's uh, got prize money worth $2 million this time. The first edition, which we launched in 2019, was $1 million. And because of the success of the first edition, the second edition has now received uh, more interest. And we've also taken a more focused approach, looking at two tracks, one on uh, clean production um, of food and the other track on food loss and food waste. Um, another initiative uh, that I would like to highlight is Ni'ma. Ni'ma means blessing in Arabic. Uh, Ni'ma was launched uh, with His Highness uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, the Crown Prince of uh, Abu Dhabi. And um, the idea behind it being that when I had a conversation with him on public TV about the status of food security in the country during COVID, uh, this was in 2000 um, and 2020, uh, he said to me, Mariam, it's so important that people need to understand that when we talk about food security, it's not just the role of the government and the private sector, but consumers also have a role to play. Their behavior around food and how much food goes into the bin plays also a role in our food security. And basically, we took those words and um, we developed an initiative called Ni'ma meaning blessing. Um, and uh, this was uh, announced uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, and Ni'ma is now um, a national movement of the UAE in aligning uh, efforts to ensure that by 2030, we are halving our food loss and food waste. And this is in line with the SDG um, development goals. I think that was quite a comprehensive answer. Thank you, Your Excellency. <laughs> go a little more into detail with regard to the food challenge. We've seen food systems and climate change being so intricately interlinked, if I could use the terminology, with agricultural ec economic sector contributing heavily to greenhouse gas emissions and climate change, on the other hand, punching back with a strong impact on food availability and supply. In this context, how important are initiatives like Food Tech Challenge to create actionable future-facing models of farming that both address food availability issues on one hand, but also create climate resilient systems with low emissions. Okay, what's really important, um, Anup, is that you need to understand that food systems today are very inefficient. In fact, they're so inefficient that if you look at the numbers, you can see why they're so inefficient. So one third, of all food being produced goes to waste. Yet we have over 800 million people going hungry. So when you look at that, you can see we have enough food, but they're not reaching the right people. And yet we also have a lot of the uh, non-communicable diseases, obesity, uh, diabetes, and these are all related to wrong foods or, or bad behavior around foods. So we really have a broken food system. And at the same time, the food systems contribute to one third of global greenhouse gas emissions. So they are, the way they are now, a problem, but fixing them will also provide a huge solution for our climate agenda. So uh, as you said, they are so interlinked. The climate agenda is, a li is so linked with the food system. So it's really important we solve our food systems to be one of the main pillars of solving the climate agenda, uh, which is a global challenge and which everybody needs to put efforts in. So having the food tech challenge not only spurs the whole idea of attracting the next generation uh, technology wave of innovations that we need to help look at how we can grow foods in hot arid climates like we have here in the UAE, because if we can grow foods here in a water scarce country without any arable land, 
then we can solve a lot of the food systems problems. So the UAE, we, we see ourselves as an open lab. We want to work with uh, partners in order to solve this issue. And Food Tech Challenge is there to spur that and make it attractive for, for uh, innovators, for uh, small scale startups that are just starting with innovative ideas to say, hey, I need a, a helping hand to access markets, to scale up, um, to give me that guidance because I have a solution and this solution maybe if scaled up could really solve um, our food systems problem and help in the transition that we're trying to look for. Could you also shed some light on recent measures that have been taken by the government at a, at a level and, and government level to overcome challenges in the agricultural sector, possibly in terms of financing or insurance or tariffs or taxation and the likes? Yes, sure. So, you know, first of all, you have to start with, do we have political will? Yes, we have the political will. This is really important, Anup. Any country needs to or cannot move the food systems agenda if the political will is not there. So number one, you need to have the political will, which we have here. Number two, there needs to be a plan. We have the National Food Security Strategy, which has the objectives until 2051, with also short-term uh, goals and targets. So that plan is in place to help us move through and align the efforts in the country to help um, transition to more uh, resilient uh, food systems. With that, we need the governance model, which the UA also have. We have the Emirates Food Security Council, uh, and this basically is the platform where all the stakeholders, all the relevant stakeholders come together and discuss the food systems transformation. What are the policy gaps we have? What are the issues that we have? And this, um, this council also was a huge help through the COVID days when we had to maneuver through so many restrictions that, that, that took place, so many bottlenecks that we could see. And we really took a proactive approach to ensure that the UAE uh, uh, residents and citizens always had access to food, to affordable food at all times. So the governance is really important. And then of course the initiatives, as I talked about, um, and looking at trying to make sure you have the ease of business is really important here because um, you need to look at what are the bottlenecks in your landscape or in your ecosystem that are hindering you from growing, for example, the agriculture, the modern agriculture sector. So in our case, what we did is we did something called the Government Accelerator Program. Uh, this is a known program here in the UAE. So we use the platform. We bring in all the stakeholders. We say, okay, we have certain issues. We want to solve them. And we come out after a 100-day period and say, these are the 10 initiatives that we'll come up with, and they will solve the challenges that we pushed in 100 days before. Um, so we did this, and with this now, the UAE is really look at, looking at things of the possibility, for example, of waiving uh, custom duties on agriculture inputs. Um, the Abu Dhabi government, for example, one of the finance issues that we have, Abu Dhabi launched the Ghadan 21 initiative, which is a $272 million dollar a fund for global partnership in many sectors, one of them being agriculture. And from this fund, already $141 million has gone into partnerships with seven pioneering ag tech companies. There's also the Khalifa Fund for Enterprise Development. They launched the Zara'i Initiative, and this is basically offers the Emirati farmers grants and interest-free loans to be able to um, uh, step up their, their farms by using technology, uh, hydroponic systems, aeroponic systems, what they, what they may choose to do, but basically being able to fund the new technologies to have more better production, more efficient production, and more sustainable production. Um, the Khalifa Fund also just uh, launched um, uh, recently the first edition of Level Up, uh, level up uh, project. Basically, they identified 10 ag tech companies and they basically mentored them for a five week training program to be able to scale up as well. So there's many things happening on a local level on, on financing. Um, also, the different emirates have now dedicated certain areas and zones for modern agriculture 
Kizad, for example, the Khalifa industrial zone in Abu Dhabi has dedicated zones for modern agriculture. Uh, the Dubai Industrial Park, um, for example, have also dedicated a lot of facilities who are in the food processing um, area and also food, food producing. So there's many things happening on, on access to finance, on um, providing area, but there's still a lot more in the pipeline that we're working on because in a way what we're trying to do as a government is work on changing the ecosystem or, or the blueprint of the country to be able to, to accommodate a growing modern agriculture sector. We've spoken at length through this conversation about the economic impacts of food security and climate change and how the government is taking a leading role in addressing those. But in our opinion, there's also a growing need to address what we call the human element of this discussion. How important, in your opinion, Your Excellency, is it for the public sector as well as the private sector to become more inclusive and consciously involve women and youth in dialogue and action? It's a very important point, Anup, and it's something that's being extensively discussed on an international level as well. I mean, women make up 50% of the agricultural workforce in developing countries. So as the climate change amplifies um, the, the risk of droughts that can destroy crops, for example, they are already in a very fragile situation. A lot of the women don't have access to funds, they don't have access to technologies. And of course, in the UAE, this is not the case. So if, if, if a woman wants to set up an ag tech uh, facility, she can just as her male counterpart, she can get a license, she has the access to finance, but unfortunately this is not the case everywhere in the world. So what we're trying to do is the UAE really believes in um, uh, partnerships and working together with other countries to try and ensure that women and youth are really incorporated in this food systems transformation. Um, because it's really important to understand that the women's role not only as a businesswoman, but the women's role as well in, in being the household's purchaser. Usually the woman is the one who goes to or arranges to go to the supermarket to buy the foods for, for, for the family. It's also her way of cooking that the family gets fed. So her role in the whole food security ecosystem is so, so important. And, and she plays a pivotal role and the behavior of consumers around food. And you have to always think about food systems is not just about producing food, it's about what the consumers also demand. And this is uh, very much the woman's role in the family, very much um, uh, brings up the next generation into how we behave around food, how we respect food, how much we put in the bin, how we prepare food, uh, all this comes very much the woman's role comes very strong in this so so their their um, their role as a businesswoman as a mother as the household um, let's say a person who who arranges the food at home um, is so important to enable them and empower them to make those decisions and to skill them also with the right knowledge and also access to technology and and um, and knowledge so that they can also pursue their, their role in this. And um, I mean, we are very lucky that we have also in the UAE, we have a minister of state for, for youth affairs and she plays a pivotal role in ensuring we have the youth circles. Uh, she also works regionally. We also have the Arab uh, Youth Council, for example, for climate change. So she, she gets the youth together. They discuss hot topics. And I've been on a lot, a lot of these youth councils where I've sat and listen to, to the youth and what vision they have for their future. What is it that we can do more to help them, to empower them? These conversations are so important. And then, of course, ensuring that those, um, those words and those visions are put into action, which is something we're very proud of here in the UAE, that the leadership very much um, listens to the youth. Every policy that we come up with, the youth's opinion is part of it. Uh, it's uh, we co-design with the youth, we co-develop with the youth, 
Um, and we can only say that it's been a game changer for us and in including their voice and their ideas because they always think very differently to, to what we senior officials do. And um, having that fresh mindset, I feel is such a, um, a breath of fresh air and I can only encourage all countries to look at youth in the same way, empower them, use them in all decisions made because what we're doing at the end of the day is we are preparing their future. So it is our duty to ensure they are co-creating and co-designing with us the future of their lives and their children's lives as well. Co-designing everyone's future together. That's a great way to end this discussion. Thank you once again, Your Excellency, for your time and detailed insights. We look forward to continuing this conversation and driving positive changes in the months and the years to come. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Anouk, for having me. And thank you to all the listeners to us today. And uh, please take care of yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. A pleasure to have you on the show. For those of you watching, don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe below for more such videos with experts in the industry. That's all for now. And until next time, goodbye.